Let's make a tree grow on different blocks. All right, we found ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be making our sapling the number one placeable on different blocks than dirt, and then also make it growable on there. This is something that a few people had some issues with. Now, this is, I actually told about this in the tree tutorial, I believe. I actually, you know, went through the general idea of what you have to do, but apparently some people did not quite understand what has to be done, so we're going to do it right here. So the general idea is the following. We basically need a custom sapling class for this. So what we're going to do is in our custom package, we're going to make a new class called the mod sapling block. Now this will extend the sapling block. And what we're going to do first and foremost, hover over this create constructor matching super, and then we're going to middle mouse button click on the sapling block. And then we're also going to middle mouse button click on the bush block. Now the bush block, as I've mentioned before, has the may place on method right here. If you return true, for a particular state, then you can place this particular block on that state. You can see that we can set this on farmland as well as everything that's in the dirt tag. This is why, of course, the sapling block in this case and also things like flowers can be placed on dirt as well as farmland. That is the general idea and this is the method to overwrite. So let's just overwrite this method. This is the may place on method and then for a particular state we want to well return this. So what we want to do is we want to for example say the state is and then we can say blocks dot let's say endstone for example. So basically we want to be able to place the sapling on endstone. Now this would work totally fine but if you have a little bit of java knowledge you can think well you know this is great but what if i have for example a sampling you know i want one sampling for end stone i want another for nether stone or nether rack and maybe you have like 13 different you know saplings with 13 different blocks then you might be like well i mean i can just create 13 different classes right we'll just make a new packet that's obviously not what you want to do what you want to do is you want to create a field for your block here and pass it in right here so usually what one might think, I highly suggest watching the entire video before you just start coding this because I want to explain some things. So we could, for example, say, well, let's make a private block here, right? Importing the net Minecraft world level block class right here. And then we're going to say this is, for example, the other dirt, right? So this is just, you know, something that's other than dirt. And what we can do is we can just pass it in through the constructor right here. And we can say this other dirt equals other dirt. So we're setting this field to the parameter right here, and then we can just pass the other dir right into here, right? So as you can see, everything works, everything would be fine. Now this is incredibly important, I guess this is why I want you to actually like pay attention to this part uh, very particularly. If we save this field as a block class, we're actually going to run into some issues. Mainly if, for example, in the mod blocks class, right, if we're now passing in, for example, into the sapling that we're going to do in a, just a moment, a mod block, right? I don't know, like a... I mean, gem cutting station, not quite the good thing, but you know, whatever, citrine, uh, the citrine block, right? Let's just go here, the citrine block, if we're passing that in. Well, sometimes it can be the case that this is not yet registered, meaning that this is not going to work. This is why we're using a supplier. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a supplier right here, and we're going to put it in a supplier. There you go, alt and enter, java util function, there you go. And then going to be a supplier here as well. So we're going to pass in a supplier, and then here we just have to say other dirt.get. The reason why we're doing this is saving this. The general idea is that until we call this dot get, we're not even concerned about whatever the block is, right? This is, uh, I've talked about this in my Java introduction a little bit when I talked about suppliers and a little bit of Lambda. And the general idea is just that for a supplier, until we call this dot get, whatever is written in the block doesn't doesn't matter to us. It's, it's like only instantiated or it only matters that if it's instantiated or not null if we actually call this get. That's the, the like high, 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 high level overview, but that is pretty much all you need to do to have a completely custom mod sapling block, block class in this case. You can then just in your sapling right here, where is it? Ebony sapling, right? What you can do is instead of the sapling block, we're just saying the mod sapling block. And then of course we need to pass in a third parameter here which is going to be a supplier of a block. So this is going to be blocks and underscore stone. There you go. And now our ebony sapling can only be placed on endstone. That is literally all that we need to do. Now there's another thing that we need to do for the growing of the tree, which I've also mentioned. This is in the world package feature mod configure features class. And that is right here before the build, we want to call the dirt method. And we would just want to make a block state provider dot simple and then pass in blocks.endstone. So once again, the same stone right here, or the same block basically, that we have passed in to the mod block sapling right here. 
And that is literally it. Now we can place down our sapling on end stone as well as grow our custom tree on end stone and the actual block that it's placed on will not be replaced. But there's actually one more thing that we need to change and that is because of some things that Forge does. So in the actual block itself, so the may place on method, that's all totally fine and that works, but we actually also have this plant type which is actually part of the bush block as well. You can see I plantable, and this is this plant type that we're getting. And this is only gotten in the actual block class with this can sustain plant method right here. And that's, you know, all good and well. That's actually only done by Forge. Uh, there you go. There it is, Forge start. But this is purely done by Forge. And it actually checks once again what the actual type of this plant is. And it's going to allow that to also be placed on grass, dirt, and so on and so forth. So if we were to use it like this, then it actually would not work. What we have to do is we have to overwrite the get plant type method right here. And we can just return plant type dot get this one right here. And then just put in basically any type of name right here. It doesn't really matter. The plant type, I believe that you should probably do it in lowercase. Yeah, you can see once again, it's all lowercase. So only A through Z underscores are allowed, but that is it. So all lowercase, keep that in mind, you know, something like custom, that's going to be totally fine because this plant type is usually only checked in the block class right here. Maybe other mods might check it, but for our purposes, this is going to be totally fine. And then it won't be allowed to be placed on dirt or grass or any other type of stuff. And it will only be allowed to be placed on the actual block that we're supplying right here. Right, that is all that we need. So let's see if it works. All right, we found ourselves in Minecraft and let's just set down an end stone. And there you go, the ebony sapling can be placed on it. And let's just see if I grow it. And there you go, an ebony tree actually has grown. And I can try and place it on dirt or, you know, grass in this case. But I, I think you can hear it. It does not actually work. So I can't actually place it down. I can only place it down on end stone being the actual block that we have defined in our custom sapling class. So I'd say that's pretty cool. Right, but that would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. Many thanks also to my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. And I will see you all in the next video. So, yeah.